look at a solution for number 29. So for our beaver to fill this dam, he needs to move over and drop four. And he needs to do that three times. So you can see I have move over and drop four, and that happens three times. Now, this solution will fill in and work. Now, when we get to number 30, they are trying to introduce you to something new. Now, because you're pretty far along in the uh, challenges, you might ignore that little hand thinking you don't need that help. You already know how to do this. But what they're trying to do is get you to use what's called a nested loop. So you drag this one over like they show you. Then you can see they want you to get the other one and put it inside. So they're giving you a hint. And this is the same problem we solved in 29. But they're showing you that we can use the repeat three instead of doing it three times. So if you recall, we had the beaver move over once and then drop four. So we're going to put the move over once above the drop four. So you'll see, I'm gonna create exactly what I had on the other page. On number 29, I had this one, move, drop four. I had that repeated three times. We know that we can use loops to repeat things and that means we can repeat things that go inside loops. So we put it inside of a loop for three. When you're working with nested loops, even though they just showed us put one and then the other, a lot of times I like to test it with just one. But because we did it on 29 the other way, I know that this will work. Move over one and drop four. So after we've learned that, and done a few, let's, let's take a look at another one. Now, not every problem you solve is going to have nested loops, but you never know. So let's start putting this together because remember, we want to break things into chunks. So I know I want him to drop four. Um, and then he's going to need to move over. Oh, look, and he's going to drop four again. So let's see. So drop four, and then one, two, three. And then, so we're going to move three times. Now, if he's here and he repeats that, drop four and move three times. One, two, three. Look where it's going to get him. So... You can see I have here two things that will repeat. Drop four and move one, two, three. Drop four and move one, two, three. So I'm going to put those inside of a loop that says repeat two times. I didn't start with a nested loop, but when I saw it, I tried it. Now, if I have everything, whoop. I left that move, repeat one. I often get distracted by what I'm doing and forget to change my loop number. When, you, that, when you're trying to troubleshoot or debug, always remember to double check those numbers because that's something that's easy to forget. So if all goes well, he should end here and just have to drop a log. And that doesn't have to go inside of anything. Now, I haven't done any testing along the way, which isn't how I roll, but I'm going to test this. If it doesn't work, the first thing I'm going to do is take this out and this off and test it this way. And that's an important thing to remember. When you're trying to debug or figure out why something didn't work, take part of your blocks off and test it in chunks, just like we try to program in chunks. When we're trying to find a problem, we should test in chunks, not throw it all away, test in chunks. So 
Let me put that back together and let's run it. So far, so good. And remember, you can see which part of your sequence he's working on because it shows you. All right, he made it. So remember, two things we want to always remember, break our programming and debugging into chunks and look for places where we can use nested loops if we're repeating an action that has a loop, a loop can go inside of a loop. Happy programming!